Today's video is for our EO Navigo series about one of the most important onboard systems, the toilet, the sanitary system. Let's find out how it's made, why it may break, and how to repair it. Please follow me. We are leaving this wonderful landscape. We're now in the Madalena Archipelago where we've been shooting a whole series of videos these days, and going back to the Marina Cala de Sardi, the greenest marina in Italy. It's owned by the NSS Group, as well as this boat, and the boat we're going to shoot the next video for the EO Navigo series, our sailing lessons. This is a rather unusual video because we're going to talk about the toilet system, the sanitary facilities. Even if it's not the most romantic topic, it is important to learn about. Because in case the onboard toilet breaks, the problem is serious. We're now going to learn how it's made and how it's used, what problems it may have, and how we can fix the toilet if it breaks. Before inviting you to follow me, I'd like to thank NSS Yachting for providing us, as usual, with the marina, the boats, and the staff we needed to shoot the video. Please follow me, and let's learn about the onboard sanitary system. Today we're going to talk about the sanitary system. Like all onboard systems, this is very important. In case of a failure in the sanitary system, life on board becomes really uncomfortable. So we must absolutely do something to fix the problem. To talk about this system, here with me is engineer Antonio Coy. Antonio is a naval expert. That is, the person who's going to examine, analyze, scrutinize the second-hand boat you wish to buy and in the end tells you, look, there are these problems here, now it's up to you. Among the several things he has to examine, there are the onboard systems, one of which is the sanitary system. He's also a sailing instructor, as well as a racer, which makes him a full-fledged figure in the field of sailing. Let's start. Antonio, would you like to tell us what this object is and how it works? This is a toilet bowl, but our attention is immediately drawn to this side pump. We use the onboard toilet by means of this device that pumps seawater in the bowl while draining all our organic waste. This is a two-stage pump. When we pull upwards, clean seawater is pumped into the toilet bowl while organic waste is sucked into the pump cylinder. When we push it down, it pumps the waste out and refills the upper basin with clean seawater, ready to be used for another cycle and inside the toilet bowl. This is rather simple, very easy. When I lower the handle, I drain the waste material I sucked in earlier and refill the bowl with seawater. And when I raise it, I pour seawater into the bowl and suck the organic waste from the bottom of the bowl into the basin. Antonio, what is this? This is a lever used to prevent fresh seawater from entering the bowl. At a certain moment, we will no longer need to pour any more water in, but just to drain. So we are going to use this lever to prevent water from entering the bowl. Perfect. This is very useful, because sometimes the bowl is completely full and we have to empty it. So we close the tap, pump, and the bowl is empty. May you tell us how to use it? The disposal system, that is the hose located on the pump drain, is sometimes very long. For this reason, even when we don't see anything more inside the bowl, that doesn't mean the waste has completely discharged into the holding tank or overboard. We need to pump several times, at least around 20 times, to make sure that the drain has been completely cleared and the hose has been filled completely with clean water. Perfect. So when your guests tell you that the toilet doesn't work because it's been filled, they drain it, but then it fills again. This is the most likely cause of the problem. You have to explain that it's not enough to pump four times. They need to pump at least 20 times to make sure that the organic waste has run through the whole hose and has reached the holding tank or has been discharged overboard. Which is the worst enemy of this item? Its worst enemy is paper. At home, we are used to throwing toilet paper into the bowl, but on a boat, we unfortunately must not do it. Toilet paper is harmful because it sticks on the inside, on the gaskets and membranes of the pump, preventing its operation and sometimes blocking it completely. 
It blocks it indeed, so it doesn't work anymore. Then you have no choice but to put on your gloves, open and start cleaning thoroughly inside. And rest assured, this is by no means a pleasant job. So please, don't throw toilet paper into the bowl. Apart from paper, you must throw nothing solid, not what's used sometimes by ladies, nor any other solid material, because any non-organic material may break parts or stick to the inside of the pump, preventing its operation over time. Here you can only dispose of organic waste and water, nothing else. Now, let's take a closer look at the parts of this pump. After removing all of the screws, we're now opening piece by piece to see how it's made inside. Antonio, would you like to start? Let's start from the top. This part unscrews, and by unscrewing it, we extract the plunger of the pump that moves up and down. Here is a whole series of O-rings or gaskets. Because there's water under pressure, they prevent water leaks. They're there to ensure water tightness. This is the part that sucks up organic waste from below, as we've seen, and pumps water inside. The water is above, and the organic waste is below. By moving the handle up, it pumps water into the bowl and sucks organic waste completely. When the handle is lowered, the organic waste is pushed through another set of gaskets that we're going to see, and refills this cylinder with seawater. Let's move on. On this lid we find the controls for the lever that we talked about before, which allows us to prevent the inflow of more water by means of these two valves on the inlet and outlet of the seawater. Depending on where we position the trigger, we open either one or the other. And then? There is the pump cylinder, with a gasket underneath that prevents the pumped material from returning into the bowl. It's kind of a check valve, but it's not watertight. Finally, here is one last part. In the back, where the hose connection is located, where the rubber hose is inserted, there is this gasket that is essential for flushing everything in one direction and then from the back. When we stop the pressure, the rubber hose closes and prevents the disposed of material from returning into the pump. Here are the organic waste enters, and this opens, widens, and lets it flow, but then prevents it from returning. Over time, this loosens. So if we don't pump much and flush everything down, something comes back up. Or something comes back that's left in the basin because we haven't pumped enough. These are all the parts of the toilet pump. Consider that when the toilet breaks, these are the parts that break. The gaskets, the pump o-ring, and this gasket, or these. What should we do in that case? We must replace the gaskets. We have to do what we've just done now, open everything to locate the fault. What's the fault? The fault might be clogging caused by paper because someone threw it in the toilet. So paper got wrapped around here. Consider that paper is soft at first, but over time it gets really hard, almost as hard as a rock, and difficult to move. So you have no choice but to open everything up and start cleaning. What to do if the gaskets are broken? What should we do? You need to have a gasket kit on board. You must always have it on board. Either the gaskets or the whole pump assembly. You must have either on board. Otherwise, in case of a failure, there's not much to do. You can't repair them. Here you have to be careful. As you can see, here are three depictions. Because this type of Japsco model, the most commonly used marine toilet, fitted on 90% of boats, is classified by year of production. 1986, 1998, 2007. They're classified by the color of this plate. So you have to check how this plate is made and compare it to these three figures. And then you have to buy the suitable kit for your toilet. If you have a 1998 toilet and buy a 2007 kit, it won't work. So you need to match the kit with the year of production of your toilet. You probably don't know, but it's enough to match the two items, so it's rather easy. However, we should consider whether this thing here is worth buying or not. Because, for example, now in 2022, this kit costs 90 euros. But the whole pump assembly, ready to be fitted after just removing two screws, and the old items, costs 96 euros. So the difference is just 6 euros. So is it worth buying the 90 euro kit instead of the pump? It may be better to buy the whole pump when the toilet doesn't work. You just remove the pump, replace it with another one, and the problem is solved. And with that, I think we're done talking about mechanical toilets. 
Now let's talk about electric toilets. Electric toilets are more and more popular on boats. There are many boats fitted with them. And what do we find on many boats, which is, in my opinion, a very good idea? We find an electric toilet in the owner's bathroom and a manual toilet like this one in the guest bathroom. An electric toilet is hard to repair when it breaks. We can't do it because there are electric motors, electric components, so we can't get our hands on it. Instead, if this one breaks, as we've seen, we just need a spare pump. We remove the pump and replace it with a new one, because that's where the problem lies. Once the new pump is installed, the toilet starts working again, and we've solved the problem. Having one of each type is not a bad idea at all, even if those who use the manual one will certainly be less happy. Let's see how it works. Antonio, can you explain to us how an electric toilet works? Basically, it works the same way. But instead of manually pumping, we have electric motors that allow us to drain, and specifically also to grind all the organic waste and another pump for filling the bowl with clean water. So an electric toilet has one more item. That's a macerator, which is not found on a mechanical toilet. Yes, it is this part here, an electric motor equipped with blades on its final axis, blades that grind and dispose of this type of waste. And that's what we're seeing here, under that box. If we remove that box, we find the macerator. Will you give us a simple explanation about its operation? How should we operate it? On this boat specifically, we find three buttons. The one we are pressing now is used to fill and drain at the same time. So by pressing it, we will see water flush, but clean water will also enter the bowl. At the bottom, we find a two-purpose button. By pressing it on the left, we only fill the bowl with water. And by pressing it on the right, we only flush the toilet. And what about the black one? This particular boat is equipped with a smart system for washing the toilet with fresh water optionally. So by pressing this black button and this water-loading gray button at the same time, we input fresh water directly from the tank. Indeed, we can hear the autoclave running. This water comes from the tank. It is not seawater. Why do we need to pour fresh water into the toilet bowl? Because we need to rinse it. Unfortunately, stagnant seawater gets a foul smell, especially if it's mixed with some organic waste if we've not taken care to flush everything out. So what can we do? We need to pour fresh water that is odorless so we can avoid foul smells in the bathroom. This goes especially for when we leave the boat for the winter season. We have to leave the boat stationary for many months, and the remaining water in the toilet hoses stays there for all those months. If we leave the seawater there, when we return, we'll smell a very strong and unpleasant odor. On the other hand, if we pay attention to have fresh water flow in an electric toilet, everything will be cleaned. If our electric toilet isn't equipped with this item to pour fresh water in, we just need to fill a bucket with fresh water and pour it into the toilets. Then we pump thoroughly in order to make fresh water flow. And so we're sure that on our return, there'll be no strong smell of stagnant seawater. And now, I want to move on to the last part of the sanitary system, the black water holding tanks. What are holding tanks for? They're mandatory at present. We must have them. They're used to avoid direct discharge into the sea. If we've closed the seacock, sewage ends up in this tank, called the black water holding tank. Why are they necessary? Because direct discharge of organic waste into the sea is really wrong behavior when you're in a harbor or roadstead. So we need to be equipped with these holding tanks for civility reasons. But they may also cause problems. Antonio, what problems might be caused by holding tanks? Holding tanks, as well as everything else on a boat, need regular maintenance. What may happen? All the material inside tends to settle on the bottom, to solidify and bind. And this is why from time to time we have to wash these tanks and rinse them with fresh water. You see that inspection cap at the top? Once the holding tank is emptied, we have to open this cap and rinse thoroughly. Before leaving the boat, we have them empty, completely clean. So we will find the boat working again without problems in the next season. If we don't do this, we won't be able to use the toilet, because when paper and organic waste gather on the bottom of these tanks, where the drain outlet is, they bind and clog the system. The tanks slowly fill up, and when they're full, you can no longer use the toilet. In most boats, the system switches from the holding tanks to the sea. 
In other boats, however, there are systems that allow you to choose between the holding tank and direct discharge into the sea, and there you get by. How should we use blackwater holding tanks? As we said, in a harbor or roadstead, we must keep the sea cock closed, so all the waste is stored in the holding tanks. But when we get out, we must remember to open and empty them. Where can we open them? We're free to open them three miles offshore. So, when we get three miles away from the shore, someone has to go down there, open the seacock and empty the tank. It's essential to open and close the tanks, because this means having much fluid flow, and that fluid flow slowly takes away even the most solid residues, those that risk compacting and clogging the inlet. And with that, I think we've done quite a broad overview of the whole sanitary system, with special attention to toilets. If this video interested you, please let us know and give us your like. I wish to thank Antonio Coe. Thank you, Antonio, for your advice. Thank you, Maurizio. I'd also like to thank the NSS Yachting Group and NSS Charter for providing us with the boat. And I look forward to welcoming you to the next video from solovila.net. Solo Vila Net. Thank <laughs> you.